button and now there's this question here that's completely focusing on NMR. So we've got compound H, which we've got to determine the structure for. We're told that its molecular formula is C10H12O. It has eight peaks in its carbon-13 NMR and its proton NMR is shown in the spectrum there. So you can see we've got splitting patterns for each peak and we've also got the peak areas. So the first part of the question is basically asking what chemical is causing this peak at delta 0 ppm? And then the rest of the question is asking us to determine the structure of compound H. And the only thing to bear in mind is the peak at 3.7 has been shifted from where it should be and it's saying it should be at 2.7. So we've got to determine the structure of H and obviously show all our reasoning and we must use the appropriate technical terms spelt correctly. So if we just go back to the spectrum there it is there. So we've got to use the correct names for these peaks. Obviously factor in the areas, the shift values, and just remember this peak at 3.7 should really be at 2.7. You can see why they've done it, because it would clash with this peak here. So I would really encourage us here Reading through the question, I would be scribbling down what that actually is telling you. So you can see carbon-13, eight peaks. That means you've got eight carbon environments. So at some point, once you've got your structure, you're going to have to check that you've actually got eight environments in your molecule. You can see I've scribbled a few bits of information on the proton NMR spectrum. So just drawn a ring around the numbers, that's the peak area, so that's telling you how many hydrogens, or it's the relative number of hydrogens in the environments. We've got five separate peaks, so there must be five proton environments in molecule H. And I've just reminded myself that this peak here should actually be at 2.7. Obviously that's going to be important when I look at the shift value on the data sheet. And straight away you can see I've actually answered the first question. What is the chemical causing this peak at zero? It's TMS, which stands for tetramethylsilane. Why do they use it? Because it provides this reference peak, or you could say it has a shift value of zero ppm. So the structure now. So remember we have to use the appropriate technical term spelled correctly. So starting at the right hand side we've got a triplet at delta 1.3. So the fact that it's a triplet must mean there's an adjacent CH2 group. We know there are three hydrogens in the environment because its area is three. So it must be a CH3 that's bonded to a CH2. So straight away you can see I can say that we must have this feature in molecule H. So it's these protons here causing the peak, and they're adjacent to a CH2, so it's coming out as a triplet. And obviously the shift value is corresponding with an RCH environment. So the quartet at 2.7. So the fact that it's a quartet means it's adjacent to a CH3. There are two hydrogens in the environment because its peak area is 2. So you can see it kind of could link in with the one we've already identified. So the environment is a hydrogen bonded to a carbon that is then bonded to a benzene ring. So you can see now I can say that, well, we could have this in the molecule. So there's the hydrogens causing the peak. They're adjacent to a CH3 group because they're coming out as a quartet. And these hydrogens are bonded to a carbon, bonded to a benzene ring. So you can see all the time we're building up little parts of the molecule 
and ultimately we just put all these parts together and come up with the final structure. So the funny one now, the doublet at 3.7 that should be at 2.7. So that corresponds with this kind of environment, H to C to C double one rho. Now the fact that it's a doublet means it's adjacent to a CH and there are two hydrogens in the environment. So what could cause that? Well, it could be something like this. So these are causing the peak and the fact that they're adjacent to this H, the single H would mean that these would come out as a doublet. So it's looking like an aldehyde now. The unusual peak at seven, so you can see I've sort of written there unusual splitting, it looks like two doublets. What we've actually got there, we've got a peak, we've got a peak area of four, which means we have four hydrogens in the environment and the environment corresponds with a benzene hydrogen. So those four hydrogens must be four hydrogens of a benzene ring. And in the actual mark scheme, it makes no reference to the splitting pattern in that peak, so that you're not expected to work out the splitting pattern there. And then the final peak at 9.7 is a triplet. So it's adjacent to a CH2 group. There's one hydrogen in the environment, and the 9.7 environment is corresponding, corresponds to an aldehyde, so it kind of backs up what we said there. And so you can see this hydrogen causes the environment, and it's coming out as a triplet, so it must be adjacent to a CH2 group, which again mirrors what we've said here. So we now need to put all that together. Remember, we need to have eight carbon environments. So that's the structure. And we can see that we have got eight carbon environments. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other thing to check is that its molecular formula actually does tally with what was given at the start of the question. So we were told it was C10H12O, and that's in fact what we've got here. So we'll just quickly run through the different hydrogen environments. Remember we had five peaks, so we've got five different environments. And I've just used different shapes to distinguish between the environments. So one, two, this is one environment, three, four, five. So again, you can see we've got the peak area of three, but a triplet because adjacent to those two, and it's in the RCH environment. So these two hydrogens are hydrogen bonded to carbon next to a benzene ring, coming out as a quartet because of these three. These are your four benzene hydrogens that we didn't need to worry about splitting for. And then on the other side, We've got these two hydrogens here that are coming out as a doublet because of this one here. And they're bonded to carbon, which is then bonded to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen on. And this hydrogen here is coming out as a triplet. And it's adjacent to those two there. 